Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today, including a double on the galactic structure as it relates to Earth cyclical catastrophe. We've got some space weather to mention first, and it begins with identifying the coronal holes on the south and bright active regions on the north. We're eyeing them moving forward, but meanwhile, there is the faintest of south-pointing solar wind stream components the last eight hours. It is the first of two small CMEs, and as predicted, their effects are minor, just nudging the earth in a glancing blow, and geomagnetic conditions barely budged. Those sunspots incoming on the north continue to merit observation, pretty spread, and simple magnetism, but development of the group today might change that. Let's go to Australia, where places took more than a year's worth of rain in a week. This is the IMERG in-time precipitation and totals overlay marked as well. It was a diabolical downpour that caused evacuations and damage to crops and infrastructure, but believe it or not, it could have been even worse. Highest rainfall totals of all actually happened offshore. Let's move on to cosmology where we find the Large Hadron Collider being useful for something other than not finding dark matter. Here, the muon and electron decays of certain quarks are violating the standard model. They should be equally created in the decay, but they're not. And this seemingly small discrepancy plays from the early days of the universe up to modern galactic, stellar, and particle dynamics. Shoot again, tiger. Up next, we're looking at the solar storm electric current induction. They're discovering that it is one coherent electric current sheet on the night side during auroral outbreaks. One of the biggest misconceptions about this current is which side is facing the sun. Well, that only matters for particle penetration, clouds, pressure, and lightning. The induced current that can take out electrical grids is a global event. We're headed over to remind ourselves of the galactic magnetic field structure. Same Taurus jet field setup is in the solar system, in the lab, and at other galaxies. And this comes with the electric current sheet that ripples through the midplane and delivers the magnetic reversal of the system and a surplus of gas, plasma, and dust. They combine with that galactic magnetic reversal to set off the solar micronova when it hits the sun. Here they are probing that field at the galactic anti-center from the sun. Various returns deliver what we expected to see, the wave, the curve, the magnetic bulge regions up and down, its sheet shaping of the wispy outer regions of the galaxy, which are much more excited than those scientists expected, just not more excited than a catastrophist expects. And in that same vein, they found a particular structure, a star cluster, loosing itself out along the ripple. They say an unseen force must be stretching it along the line. In fact, they blame dark matter, which allegedly doesn't interact well with normal matter. But we are blaming the galactic electrodynamics and feedback interactions from within the cluster. As it becomes excited by the sheet, it should energetically boom in pieces and repel parts of the system the same way it might appear to gravitationally stretch out. Luckily, we are not in a star cluster where we're packed in tight among neighbors who can go ballistic upon sheet encounter. We're fairly on our own here with the sun, and it will provide all the challenge we can handle here in the coming years. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.